How do I get right with God before it is too late? Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Anything that is timed needs a great deal of attention. Life on earth is timed, and we do not have eternity to make our ways right with God. Do you understand the notion that in eternity we will not have the opportunity to get right with God? If your time elapses before you get right with God, it will be too late. The prophet Isaiah helps to understand that right now, wherever you are, is the time to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek Him. Chase after God. Don't chase after money. That money will do nothing for you in eternity. Seek God. I encourage you today to make seeking God your number one priority. Working so hard and laying up treasures for yourself does not guarantee you a long life. Neither does being poor increase your lifespan. You must understand that your wealth has nothing to do with how long you live on earth because human life is not contained in the abundance of wealth. I therefore urge you to give your life solely to the service of God now because now is the best time to serve Him. Isaiah 55 verse 6 Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Isaiah 55 suggests that there is a time where God will not be found, a time where God will not be near. So right now, wherever you are, right now is the time for you to seek Him. You may be on a bus, or driving your car, or even at work. You can pray to God, you can confess your sins, you can repent to God, you don't need a church building, you don't have to drop to your knees, but right now you can pray to God. We need to ask ourselves from time to time, how much time do we have left? Is it 30 years, 40 years, or 100, or even 10 minutes? But God in His infinite wisdom has hidden this from all of us. We know we will die someday. But none of us know how soon, or later, that day will come. For some, it came very early, when they have barely begun to find their feet in life. For some other people, they lived longer than they expected without achieving so much. Nonetheless, this uncertainty shouldn't scare us. Instead, it should teach us to live well by giving ourselves up to the service of God Almighty. A quote by Paulo Coelho once revealed that life is too short or too long for me to allow myself the luxury of living it so badly. And that is the truth of the matter. Either short or long, life should be lived meaningfully. The truth is, we don't know how much time we have left. If only we knew, we would take life more serious. How much time do you have left? This is a question to ask yourself at all times. Therefore, while we have breath in our nostrils, we must ensure to settle our account with God. The time is coming when the door of mercy will be shut. If you take the grace of Christ for granted now, you may live in eternal regret. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says that it is appointed to men once to die, after which is judgment. There is no repentance in the grave, neither is there mercy after death. We only have our lifetime to make things right with God. Unfortunately, no one knows the day Christ will return. Neither do we know the number of years we have been appointed to live. 
If you will get right with God, you only have this present moment. You don't know what the next minute holds. Isaiah says, to get right with God, the wicked needs to forsake his ways, and the unrighteous needs to forsake his thoughts and return to the Lord. God is merciful to forgive the sins of those who forsake their evil ways and turn to him in repentance. You cannot get right with God if you do not repent and forsake your sinful ways. God loves you, but he hates sin. You need to forsake your sins and cry to him for mercy. Never allow the devil to make you exaggerate your sins above the mercy of God. I may not know what you have done, but I know what Christ has done for you. Your sins are not too big for God. Your sins are not too dark for God. Your sins can be forgiven. The blood that Jesus shed for our sins is still flowing for the redemption of all who will come to him. Isaiah 1 verse 16 to 18 says, Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God is giving you invitation to his presence. He is willing to settle account with you. Regardless of your past life, he bids you to come. No matter how great your sinful depths are, he is willing to cancel them all. How does that make you feel to know that God is willing to forgive you? He is not only willing, but he wants to forgive you. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. That is an invitation to you. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Before you close your eyes in death, you have to get right with God by receiving the life of Christ. Jesus has died for your sins. He has paid your debt and redeemed your soul through his blood. You don't have to face the wrath of God anymore. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 and 19 says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God is no longer counting your sins against you. He is willing to receive you as his son or daughter. However, you have to make the choice to accept the life of Christ by confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. There is no other way by which we can be saved except through faith in him. Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is not enough to believe Jesus in your heart, you have to confess him as Lord with your mouth to be saved. Everyone in hell has learnt their lessons, but they only learnt it 
when it was too late. The time is coming when people will confess that Jesus is Lord and yet they will not be saved. Every tongue must confess Jesus as Lord, but there is a late time to do that. Save yourself from the looming wrath of God by embracing the cross and allowing the Holy Spirit to express the righteousness of God through you. Hebrews 12 verse 14 gives us a constant reminder that without holiness no man can see the Lord. God demands that we should be holy. Heaven is for saints, not sinners. There is nothing unclean that will enter into it. If your lifestyle is not glorifying God, you have to repent now before it is too late. Just like God shut the ark of Noah in those days, the door of salvation and repentance will soon be shut. Don't be like the five foolish virgins whose preparation to meet the bridegroom was inadequate. They made up for their inadequacy at the wrong time. This is the right time to seek the Lord. This is the best time to call upon his name. Tomorrow might be too late. 